Kenny has said the highest peak of any offer ever is what people tell you, but just his peak is a lower rating than Simple and Zaiwu's entire careers, and he was never the top ranked offer in HLTV's top 10. So I want to look at how good Kenny S actually was, why the op nerf killed his prime and nobody else's, and why Monacy is the new Kenny S. But before we go any further, Subtick is probably the biggest complaint people have for CS2, but the second biggest I see is packet loss and bad routing, especially on Faceit. And for that, I want to show you our sponsor gear up booster there are many reasons your internet could be having problems but sometimes it's not your internet it's the connection to the server in theory your connection would go straight from you to the server and back however sometimes for whatever reason your data will take a detour to nowhere and then to the server which can cause an increase in ping and or the introduction of packet loss for myself this used to be a problem I personally used a VPN for as certain ESEA servers would give me 180 ping to Chicago rather than the normal 50 to 60 in fact I know a player that lives in Chicago that would get 100 ping to certain Chicago servers, and this was something we managed to fix with a VPN. Gear Up Booster is a great choice to fix this because they focus on having a stable, low latency connection to a variety of locations. Gear Up Booster is extremely easy to use and can be set up in seconds, allowing you to quickly return to your gaming without having to worry about outside problems, and not only that, it's 100% safe for use in CS2. If you want to experience the benefits for free, for PC and mobile users, check out Gear Up Booster at the link in the description. This is the best way to peak with an off. As soon as you scope in, you drop to 100 movement speed, so you want to scope in as late as possible. But before the op nerf, you had 150 movement speed, meaning the correct peak was this. It's, it's the same thing because 150 movement speed is still less than your normal run speed, which is 200. Surprisingly, nearly every opera in the pro scene got better after this nerf, except for Kenny S, who was never the same. Or at least that's what they'll tell you, but Kenny S's best rank before the nerf was number six with two operas above him, and his ranking in 2015 after the nerf was also number six with two operas above him. I always thought this meant the op nerf was a bit overblown, but after watching a ton of demos, I still kind of think that, but it's a lot more complicated. To really understand how good Kenny S actually was, you have to look at the stats. I mean, the way he played, but also the stats too, because how was this only number six in 2014? Op like device, not like simple is a phrase you might have heard before, and it's pretty true, but back in the day it was op like guardian, not like Kenny S, which makes perfect sense because Kenny S was known for insanely aggressive plays like this one, but actually a lot of his plays were a lot closer to modern opping than you might think. This is a mid hole that was completely standard in Kenny S's prime, and he completely destroys it just by re-aggressing lane. If you didn't know better, you might say the scope speed let him do that, but nobody plays this setup today because any good opper and most bad ones can can easily get the kill, even with slower movement speed. A lot of things that seemed like insane aggression at the time are actually just standard plays in today's CS. Like today, you know that you start the round by mauling a ramp. The reason for that is because of this peak that Kenny S gets away with for free. And you know today, if someone doesn't molly a ramp, this is a great play. From today's perspective, Kenny S's aggression is actually way less impressive than how much of a one-man army he was. If we look at Kenny S on Cash, one of Titan's best maps, Kenny S has said they basically had one strat. And that strat seems to be 3A main and eventually Kenny S will kill their A player, which sounds like a joke, but I'm not even exaggerating, this actually worked consistently. Then if we compare his playstyle to the way other offers were playing at the time, this all starts to make a lot of sense. You could say there are two types of oppers, anti-riflers and anti-oppers. An anti-opper would be someone like Guardian that would start window and late round rotate back to ticket, which by the way is still a good play today. An anti-rifler would be someone like JW who will swing a lot of angles while scoped in and accept that if they run into an opper, they might just die. If you were to ask Kenny S, the playstyle from Guardian was far too passive before the op nerf, and honestly, he's probably right. Looking at this game versus I by Power, knowing he's aggressive, you'd expect Skadoodle to give the op to steal and play rifle for the game, or otherwise buy an op at least a few times to post up and prevent aggression. But I buy power rarely buys an op in this game, and when they do, that's absolutely not how they use it, instead using it to lead into sites late round instead of using any utility. This means for most of the CT side, there's no reason for Kenny S or any other opper really not to do something like re-aggress mid for free information or a kill, which is exactly what he did. And this was really common on a lot of maps, teams just didn't hold 
hold the re-aggress like they do today, but oppers weren't yet exploiting that. But what really set Kenny S apart was when that type of play would go wrong. I buy power knows exactly where he is, sets up to deal with them, and Kenny S still gets two kills. That's not something he would do every round, but it is something he would honestly do almost every round. And it's exactly why Olaf said Kenny S is the only player he's ever been afraid of. Of course, this was before Simple. Because Kenny S was almost impossible to lock down without getting at least a couple of shots off, and he would repeat things over and over and over, knowing he would probably hit the shot, but if not, he was never going to get punished for it. And while I'll argue that some of his plays that were called aggressive at the time really weren't that aggressive, plays like this obviously were. And you'd expect the op nerf to have tried to stop that kind of thing, but this clip is from after the nerf, because the op nerf didn't destroy the aggressive style quite as much as people think. If you look at reddit threads or tweets or vines, I don't know what they did back then, around the op nerf, you would think they may as well have deleted the op from the game entirely by removing 50 speed from the gun. Notable responses call the op broken, unusable, and worthless. Oh no sorry, that's about CS2. About the op nerf, people are calling it the worst change ever and saying that aggressive oping is completely dead now. Except even JW, who is the poster child for ridiculous aggression, improved his rating over the rest of 2015. So when people say the op nerf was targeted directly at Kenny S, there's a point to be had there because I said before there were two styles of opping, but really there's three, except the third group was only Kenny S. When it comes to the correct way to peek an angle, if you expect an opper, it's really always been the same. But you could sometimes get away with scoping in a little earlier to make lining up the shot easier. And if your name was Kenny S, you could stay scoped in the whole time and still win the fight way too often. If we look at that game versus I by power, I have a feeling that Skadoodle might have been just too slow to win these sorts of duels, so he didn't even want to try. This would also explain why other oppers got better after the nerf, because they no longer had to die to Kenny S. Just to be clear, I'm not saying Kenny S tried to peek into oppers like that, but if you're scoped in, it makes shots on riflers a lot easier. That should be a bigger risk than just a 50-50 duel if you run into an opper. And arguably, the slightly early scope in you could do pre-nerf also made lining up long range peaks a little too easy. But if you look at the change in opping style after the nerf, there's actually a completely different nerf that nobody talks about. In the same patch as the op nerf was a whole lot of other changes. They buffed SMGs, they nerfed the Tech 9, and they also changed the tagging system. If we look at this clip from Skadoodle pre-nerf, he probably couldn't do this with the new op speed, but I also don't think he could do this with the new tagging system either. In short, the old system based how much you got slowed only on the weapon you were holding. The new system based it also on the weapon of the attacker, and multiple hits would increase the amount you were slowed. Which means if you missed a shot, you were a lot more likely to get punished for it, and the two changes can combined made these sorts of repeaks that inspired the term 8RWS quad opper a lot less possible. It is weird then how opping seems to have only become stronger since the nerf, but it makes sense if we look at the impact MR12 has had on CS2. Switching to MR12 means that winning pistol rounds should lead to winning the game a lot more often. I mean, it's literally a higher percent of the rounds when you win it. Except, so far, that's not what happened. If you win both pistols, you're now less likely to win the game than at the end of CSGO, because players have realized that they were misplaying the economy. And with opping, I think players realize the same thing. Leading with the op and no utility isn't that effective, when instead you can keep your opper alive for the post plant. And you can still peek into riflers while scoped in, but maybe re-peaking five times isn't necessary when your opponents suck at using utility to take the site anyways. There's a stat I found recently that I think explains this really well. It's the death of the hybrid opper. In early CSGO, there was tons of hybrids and semi-hybrids, as in players that would pick up the op when they felt like it, and the best players in the world generally would pick up the op pretty often and use it really well. Forest, Shocks, Olaf, and even Happy come to mind, but that's basically gone entirely, except Nico. The op nerf didn't delete the anti-rifle style of play, but it did make it a bit harder and a lot more punishing. Then as teams got better and better with utility, it became harder to just sit on sight and get free kills, so players that would pick up the op once in a while just to hold an angle became a lot less effective. You actually needed an opper that could do a bit more than that. And that's how we end up with Monacy, who from all my research seems to basically just be a reincarnation of Kenny S. He's insanely fast, he misses probably more than he should, and he's on a team with a player that could never win a 
a major. If you're wondering how good Kenny S was, I think Monacy should give you a decent idea, except Kenny S was slightly more dangerous because of how much harder it was to punish repeaks, and teams just had zero idea how to stop an op from picking you apart at the time. Coming back to why he was ranked number 6 both before and after the op nerf, I think this one is a bit misleading, and I myself didn't understand it until making this video. Because despite being number 6 in 2014, his article actually calls him clearly the most impressive player of the year individually. Because it seems like at the time, they may have prioritized team success a little bit more than they do today. I think if Kenny S had that type of run in today's CS, he would be at worst the number 2 or 3 player in the world, and it would be a lot easier to tell how great he actually was. Prime Kenny S was clearly ahead of his time in terms of gameplay and ability, and though I'm not sure the op nerf was all that caused his prime to end, especially because he did rank back into the top 10 a couple of years later, it does seem like Valve nerfed the op specifically to stop his style of gameplay, or at least to stop players in matchmaking that pretended to be Kenny S and nobody could kill them. So if the question is how good was Kenny S, I guess the answer is good enough for Valve to nerf him. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and check out this other video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy.